are you someone who is considering to get into data science are you someone who has already taken a course and still looking for a job in data science do you have a data science role in your company but aren't able to make it into that particular team do you feel overwhelmed by the amount of theory you need to learn before you can solve a machine learning problem statement do you fear coding statistics and maths are you a non programmer who wants to get into data science but aren't able to do it don't have a clear path on how to get into data science these all questions can be answered by me so watch till the end guys before that let me give you a background of why i'm doing this and why it should matter to you hey my name is kunal i'm the founder of data science masterminds i'm a data scientist a data science coach i have 13 plus years of experience of working in data science i've trained over 5000 students in corporates institutions and retail students and discovered a way that helps you get into data science not only that but also gain some confidence i'm not a good coder myself i don't know maths and statistics that well and i continue to upgrade by learning new technology how then do i survive in my profession as a data scientist more than anything i'm a problem solver guys and a critical thinker these are the two most underrated skills in data science the most important skill that you need to get into data science it will be these two and it will set the foundations of how you get into data science so before you get into theory before you get into tools before you get into any of the hands on programming you need to begin with a certain thing that is understanding businesses and learning to solve problems for them and think critically while solving problems i am on a mission to help 1 million data aspirants like you effectively learn to apply data science and grow in their career warning so keep watching this video if you feel you have the curiosity to solve problems and develop your critical thinking while doing so so what method i'm going to use we are definitely not going to be starting with theory we're going to start by understanding the business problems and how we can solve them using data science and then gradually upgrade ourselves to solve them using machine learning deep learning and ai once we have identified the business problems then we learn the tools to solve those problems hence i'm introducing the concept of non linear methods of learning data science this way you are sure to know why you are actually solving a certain problem statement using maybe dashboards or let's say machine learning deep learning or ai and that way you're sure to know that whatever you do is going to be it's not going to be worthless and it's going to get applied somewhere that way also you'll be able to pick out things that are going to be more useful to the business rather than wasting your time on doing something that is not going to be that useful but how are we going to do it uh, how are we going to apply this method and learn data science right so i've created a six step process to launch a career in data science it's focused on weekly execution plan with support from your cohorts it has weekly coaching coaching sessions by me or mentors that know their ins and outs of the businesses and ins and out of the tools to solve business problems also you'll inherently learn to build your confidence while creating resumes and also confidently crack interviews how cool is that now let me walk you through the six step process of learning data science or launching a career using data science and this will not have any theory in place so we're going to start by the first step that is choosing an industry or function now why that why does it matter you want to be a subject matter expert and a not a, you know not have generic knowledge on a topic and when you talk to companies or business leaders or managers they would definitely love a person who understands their business more deeply and is passionate about that particular domain or that particular problem statement itself that really really starts your journey into a into another tangent where you are going to become more a subject matter expert and less be less generic now how do you do this choose an industry you already work or are passionate about and uh, you can just pick anything that you want at this particular stage right if you are a fresher choose any industry 
that you want to go with anything can be possible and what are some of the industries of functions you can choose anything from like e-commerce retail telecom bfsi banking healthcare insurance manufacturing media the functions that you can choose from is sales marketing human resources finance information technology executives business intelligence service and support so there are more to this list so start wherever you are wherever you can and build your profile from that particular place now if you don't know what to choose begin by randomly picking any one and you can always repeat this process and it will work the same way that you do for this randomly chosen domain or function now once you have established the function or industry what next business understanding now you want to understand this business deeply why does it matter big business understanding is equal to understanding what metrics are used to run the business often machine learning use cases are derived from the problem statement that the business is face now this is going to be crucial to have a high level view of why you are executing a machine learning uh, to solve a problem or ai to solve a problem so once you know what the business cares about what are the metrics that they want to optimize then you have a high level view of solving that particular problem and you will be able to effectively make your decisions or choose machine learning algorithms or solution that works to solve that particular problem trust me guys this is one of the biggest biggest thing that you can ever start with and it's going to help you down the line make decisions on what to learn and what not to learn you can easily go into a lot of depth in learning data science but the idea is to optimize and learn those specific skills that are required to solve a problem now how can you do business understanding a lot better you start by understanding the metrics measures and how kpis are derived this the concepts called as lag and lead measures and you also identify the frequency of the business operations that way you will start getting deeper and deeper into understanding the business then next comes how do you serve it to that particular business this is a framework that i have taken from mckinsey that is a 3 c's and 3 s's you want to start with context criteria for success and constraints then you want to serve it to those stakeholders in a specific scope and you want to identify the data sources that are required to solve this problem now data sources are going to be a big right for you to discover and understand and then solutionize it to present it to your stakeholders and so you want to be exceptionally good at that which is why i have put two layers of that before you actually start doing machine learning but trust me that's going to be quick and it's not going to take that much long to you know study theory and then get to solving those problems now once you have understood the business it's time to create a cxo perspective of of the business or rather the cx cxo or executive dashboard now why does this help context helps solve business problems better ceo is a person in the company that is responsible to make revenue and profits and learning to think like like a ceo will gradually help you build business acumen and when you interview with leaders or managers you're going to show that confidence because you understand their metrics and they are going to be more willing to talk to somebody who understands their business first and then brings the solutions to help them solve the problems so that is the why guys now how are going to be how are we going to do that we're going to be starting by understanding their data you're going to create kpis reports dashboards and understand the frequency of operations this will allow us to create metrics that the cxos or the executives care about and are willing to look at it in in views that is going to help them action and take action on their businesses now moving beyond this particular dashboards is something that they look at is even more deeper business problems right and so that is going to be the next stage that is the deep dive analysis deep dive analysis why do we need that De ceos and executives know the businesses 
through their metrics okay and uh, beyond the overall metrics that is there right they still need information to di dive into problem statements that they don't have data or cannot take an intuitive guess on and that is where this deep dive analysis comes into right and so they require certain data points but manipulated in such a way that it's it's going to help them confidently take certain decisions on some of the biggest problem areas that they have and this is pure data manipulation guys this will just come with uh, your understanding of the basic metrics how they interplay with each other at what levels are the ceos interested in summarizing data grouping and uh, you know just turning and twisting the data in ways to extract value from it and a lot of time this is named as the eda it has there are things like univariate analysis bivariate analysis and so many other things that can be layered on top of uh, just basic dashboarding and here mathematics and statistics also comes here and so you want to use all of the tools in your hand to go deep dive and you know bring solutions that matter for these people to to take decisions and now once you have sort of done a deep dive analysis on this you want to get into the next step that is your advanced analytics predictive analytics advanced predictive analytics and why does it matter not all business problems can be solved through dashboards or score or scorecards or even the deep dive analysis right beyond descriptive and diagnostic analytics there is predictive descriptive and diagnostics are backward looking while predictive is forward looking there is also prescriptive which is you tell the business what to do and they have to get a chance to decide whether to take that particular action or not and so this puts you in a unique situation after you know their business through dashboards after you have done enough deep dive analysis it puts you in a unique position to sort of apply maths statistics and machine learning in new ways that is going to further increase the value to the business and so how that is the why part of why we need advanced analytics then you want to choose adva advanced predictive analytics identify the metrics to be influenced and then you want to choose the ml methods to solve the problem that is how you're going to do it and then provide recommendations now you might ask me kunal okay where is machine learning in all of this and where, how do i get into data science by already doing these steps right you will be you will be learning few tools like excel sql power bi tableau and these are going to be the like the uh, the foundational tools and then this is where things start turning around and you get into python or r and so instead of going through all of the algorithms and all of the stuff machine learning algorithms and theories and all of that you're going to identify certain problem statements in your chosen domain and function and pick pick out one one case of each of the problem statement that we have so for example you know if you want to identify some problem statements uh, we'll have five different which are the most commonly used in industry and you don't need a lot of learning curve to solve this problem so one is a classification problem like customer churn you have a regression like price projection your forecasting like uh, demand forecasting it's you know predicting into the future like stocks then you have clustering which is customer segmentation text classification uh, we have sentiment prediction right so even with the, just the first two itself classification and regression you're going to be already having a very good profile now if you go deep into those classification and regression algorithms you will start seeing that you can speak more confidently during interviews and so you don't want to go cut out all, you want to cut out all the noise and start focusing on solving this type of problem statement for that particular industry and imagine the the benefit you have of applying to a company that actually needs this solution they look at your resume they see hey you have solved this kind of problems they are more than happy to speak to you and understand how you solved it and obviously the reverse is going to also happen 
when you get into the company they're going to coach you on how to better solve it or how to get a better understanding of the solution the data sources and how stakeholders consume it so it's going to be a win-win situation for you also now after you know you predicted the advanced analytics done some predict predictive analytics what next you need to be able to deploy the solution and be able to put it put, bring actionable insights and so you know you need to be able to write your outcomes in one liner formats right so you can you should be able to write it in like in one line what it's what your outcomes are and then you should be able to create visuals charts or summaries to be able to explain your ideas you should be able to write a one pager of what project you have done and so you can communicate with different stakeholders this is key guys right you'll do awesome tech stuff but uh, uh once you once you start to present it and teach people how you've done it how you solve it then you, your adaptability or the value to the business increases then how do you present it right you have platforms like powerpoint tableau power bi uh, python applications streamlighter django and you have flask also you have um, you know r shiny and these are just the few that you can begin with right there are multiple other options but these are something that you can begin with and then last but not least is you be able to add that to your resume add it to your github profile that you can share it to everybody and then deploy it free on tableau server shiny app streamlight or heroku this basically shows companies how you think end to end and it's definitely going to you know create an edge over a lot of data science aspirants so there you go guys this is what is this is what i call the non linear way of learning this is the data science launchpad where you can take the six step process to launch your career in data science and do it much more faster than anybody else so thank you for watching this video guys so as a next step i want you all to download your copy of the six step process to launch a career in data science i place the link below in the comment section and in the first comment and join the problem solvers hub to meet like minded people like you who are trying to make it into the data science world